Are we good? Yeah. Okay. So um, I just wanted to take uh, just a very brief couple minutes to discuss sort of um, the future of singularity, what we have in the in the pipeline for sort of the immediate future and, and where we want to take the project a little bit and just some ideas that we have. Uh, so once again, you can see my contact information, not very exciting. Uh, so the four main things that I want to talk about right now, first of all, is uh, better and proper support for services in Singularity. Uh, the second is potentially uh, looking at um, getting Singularity to r be able to be orchestrated by Kubernetes. Um, the third is a concept that we've sort of been throwing around uh, called trusted containers and then also um, a separate concept but sort of similar called data containers. Uh, and then fourth, I want to just briefly mention uh, about the connection between Singularity and the, the company RStore that I've been talking about. Uh, so to start off, um, this is what we sort of are kind of having in mind in, as term, uh, as far as service support in Singularity goes. So right now, uh, what we have people doing is just running that middle line there, like Singularity exec, uh, you know, with your container, and then whatever program you want to execute, and it runs in the container and it dies, and that's basically it. Uh, and so uh, what we want to start working towards supporting is being able to do a Singularity start command and it then spawns up a PID namespace with a Reaper process as PID1. Um, and then you can actually run things like, uh, you know, web services, MySQL, whatever you want inside the container uh, and build sort of proper uh, set of tools to do that through Singularity. Um, and then the second thing that um, we've kind of been tossing around the idea is a potential integration of uh, singularity with Kubernetes um, and how that might work. Uh, and so uh, we did a little research online and we, we found uh, that left uh, image up there is how Kubernetes is now handling rocket support. And uh, we sort of took that image and we said, how could we potentially make it um, so that we could follow a similar workflow so we don't have to do too much implementation work, uh, but swap out instead of system D and the rocket API service, we could just swap in some sort of singularity API service that doesn't yet exist. Um, but that we'll need to create for this. And so the idea is that, you know, instead of having system D handling the, the creation and the, uh, the death of um, the, the containers, uh, we instead do the singularity start and singularity stop to handle the, the uh, creation of containers. Um, and then uh, Singularity would then also provide some ability to list the Kubernetes pods running and uh, that would be also provided by Singularity as a way of, uh, you know, monitoring what's currently going on. Uh, so this question was actually asked to me by Luke just a minute ago when we were kind of just discussing. The question is why would we want to be doing this at all? It seems kind of weird that uh, you might want to be integrating an HPC tool into something that's really commonly looked at as an enterprise. Uh, thing and so uh, one of the first motivations is um, that we've been engaged with a large US government entity uh, to sort of just investigate this integration in some capacity um, and I mean the, the goal is to be able to deploy uh, deploy Kubernetes pods and whatever services via Singularity uh, using the Singularity start and stop that I've been talking about and then uh, trusted slash data containers. So these are two kind of interesting ideas. I talked a little bit about uh, the interaction of singularity and data inside of containers earlier uh, with respect to how um, you can put a bunch of data in a container on a, a remote file system and not incur performance penalties from massive amounts of uh, input output operations per second. Uh, and so the idea is that you just package data into a container but just data into the container. And then what you can do is mount that data into a different container uh, and swap out what data you want to run your container with. Uh, and just to provide some sort of, um, you know, format or whatnot. And this is still kind of in the idea phase. Um, and then the second half of, of new forms of containers is a trusted container, where we provide some ability for people to verify the contents of a container. 
Uh, and so if you have you know, financial records that you want to run some code on and you want to be sure that you're using one image that has been uh, crafted by your team and you want to make sure that it's only going to do um, you know, what you want it to do, uh, then this will, you know, this idea of a trusted container will provide some sort of verification for you that you're really only running uh, what you think you're running. The goal is to mitigate the potential uh, of malicious use and also to uh, work towards compliance with confidential uh, and other sort of things like that. Uh, and then just the fourth thing is uh, singularity in R store. So if any of you are on the Singularity mailing list, there's uh, been some sort of change up regarding um, who is working where, uh, and this name RStore comes up a lot. And so RStore is a, they're right now a startup in stealth mode in Silicon Valley. Um, and um, it just so happens that they have an interest in Singularity. And so right now they're the primary funding entity of Singularity development. So they. <coughs> Uh, they fund me, I'm working for them, they fund Greg, uh, they're hiring developers to work for Singularity. Um, and they're using Singularity to develop um, some new technologies. Uh, and what I can mention here is we're looking at developing sort of research data management technologies as well as HPC cloud orchestration technologies. Um, and Singularity is sort of an integral part of accomplishing this in the way that we want to accomplish that. And then just on my last slide, we do have a website, rsor.io. Um, doesn't really have much, but you can check it out. And that's it. Cool. And do we have any questions? Um, yeah, Singularity Hub, which I guess is the, the Docker Hub. Yeah. Um, can you give an update on if you intend to kind of maintain that and grow it and build a community around HPC applications that mm -hmm. people can just pull and use straight away? Yeah, so I, I mean, there's been no change as far as we were continuing um, development of Singularity Hub. It's being worked on actively right now. Uh, one thing that was also brought up in the mailing list is the ability to deploy a private instance of Singularity Hub, like uh, you know, on an HPC resource so that you, like similar to a private Docker registry where you can run it and then put your own stuff in it and then have it locally so you can deploy it over InfiniBand or file or whatever. Uh, and those plans are still in the works, not going anywhere. So how far into the future is this Singularity Kubernetes uh, thing? It's um, a good question. So. Uh, we hope that it's not far into the future, um, but as it is right now, we don't necessarily have uh, sort of all all the knowledge, you know, gathered yet for how we want to implement this, and it's still in the the research and ideation phase. Um, but we're looking to make this a reality as soon as possible. And and, and I'm going to wire in Greg in like 20 minutes, maybe, so yeah. he can give also some insights. I think Definitely. so, maybe. Definitely. We can wait for the singularity questions until the founder comes in, and um, yeah, I'm hoping that it work, but should work. Okay, cool. Thanks again. Yeah. Um, yeah the next up, we have uh, Kubernetes, or maybe, yeah, let's let's. Oh, no, maybe I do this Docker thing, the quick Docker thing first. Then you do Kubernetes. Then I talk about user land performance optimization for a sec, and then we wire in uh, Greg to wrap everything up.